All right, so I asked and you guys answered. Do you want to see some more shortcuts and automations? We're gonna cover a lot in this one from kind of easy basic stuff all the way to some pretty advanced. I got some cool things I wanna show you, so uh, it's gonna be a fun one. Let's go. Yo, what's going on guys? Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, for those new here, my name is Shane and on this channel we're building an easy smart home using HomeKit. So if you're in the HomeKit, be sure to subscribe because we're dropping new videos every Sunday right here all about HomeKit. Okay, so I asked you guys on Instagram and here on YouTube what you wanna see and I've heard you. A lot of you guys want to see more automations and shortcuts and even more advanced stuff. Now this is actually gonna be the first part of a two-part series uh, and that's just because I got a lot of stuff that I wanna show you. Now be sure not to miss out on next week's video because if you're into uh, HomeKit and getting a little more advanced, you're gonna wanna check this one out. So today we're basically gonna talk about three different things. Uh, the first one, we're gonna start off pretty easy. I'm gonna show you how you can utilize CarPlay and this really cool wallet to make sure you never leave your wallet behind again. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can create a panic automation or shortcut that will do a bunch of things. It can do whatever you want involving your HomeKit lights and stuff, but we're also going to uh, trigger a, a HomeKit siren. And lastly, I'm going to show you how you can run secure automations automatically without requiring authentication on your phone. And then to take it a step further, I'm gonna show you how you can create timers within HomeKit. So you can create timers that can trigger automations and do different things like that. We're gonna utilize HomeBridge for this. So stick around, we've got a lot to talk about. And I have a feeling this one might get a little bit long. In fact, that's why I broke it into two different videos, but I'm also gonna put time codes in the description below. You'll also be able to see chapters along the bottom here of the video, so you can skip around to the different parts of the video that interest you. All right, so first up is our wallet automation. A big shout out to Exter. They sent me this wallet. This isn't sponsored by them or anything, but they did send me a couple of these, so I'm actually gonna give one away. So stay tuned to the end of this video, and I will tell you how you can uh, possibly win one of these. But what this wallet does, it's really cool actually it has a button right there that kind of shoots all your cards out so it's really practical kind of this nice minimal design they sell these solar powered uh, tracker cards okay these are really nice and you can just slide this in here and these work with Siri shortcuts I set up a couple ones called where's my wallet so I can just tell Siri you know where's my wallet and it'll start pinging my wallet and it also works the other way around so if you long press on this it will ping your phone which is really cool but I wanted to take a step further and I thought, how can I create a nice automation that makes sure I never leave my wallet? If you've ever been in that situation where you know you end up at the grocery store or something, you check your pants and you're like, man, I forgot my wallet and you didn't even realize it till you got there, this is gonna solve this, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a CarPlay automation that every time I connect to CarPlay, it's going to ping my wallet for five seconds and then stop. So the benefit there is every time I get in my car and I connect to CarPlay, I will know if I have my wallet. If I don't hear this, then I forgot my wallet. So let me show you how to set that up. All right, so let's go over to our shortcuts and open up our shortcuts. And you can see here's where's my wallet. So, uh, and then there's stop bringing my wallet. But what we're gonna do is create a new automation, tap new personal automation. We're gonna do CarPlay. Okay, so this works if you have CarPlay, if you use CarPlay every time you get in your car. Uh, and we're gonna do connects to CarPlay, new action. Chipolo is the name of the app that the Exter wallet uses. So we're gonna see right there, you can see ring Exter, stop ringing Exter are two options we have. We're gonna do ring Exter wallet. Now we're gonna do a wait action. We're gonna do five, let's do four seconds. So it's just a real quick ring. Oop. Let's go back, uh, add, we're gonna look for that Chipolo again. Stop ringing Exter, so it's gonna ring my Exter, wait four seconds, and then stop ringing my Exter. All right, so that's awesome. So every time we connect to CarPlay, it's gonna ring this for four seconds. So if I get in there and I connect to CarPlay and I don't hear my wallet ring, then I know I have forgot my wallet. Choose next. We wanna turn off ask before running. That way it'll do it automatically every time we get into our vehicle. And choose done. 
And that's it. So this is really cool. These wallets are awesome. I love this design and the ability to have Siri shortcuts is just great. This will actually make for a great Father's Day gift. I think I'm gonna give my dad one. If you wanna pick one up, check the link down below. I've got a discount code down there to save you a little bit of money. Um, it is an affiliate link, so that helps me out. But I'm also gonna give away one of these with the tracker card. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'm gonna show you how you can win. Now you can get into your car and you will always know if you have your wallet. Again, big thank you to Exter for sending me these really cool wallets. Next is our panic button. This one is just for if you or your family feel unsafe, you can hit this button. And it will uh, basically, you can have it do whatever you wanna do. But what we're gonna have it do is sound an alarm, okay? And what I'm gonna use for this, I actually have a uh, Onvis burglar alarm. Uh, has a lot of potential. I did a review on it a while ago, but it's hard to recommend as it does have some issues when it comes to uh, actually using the security alarm feature. You get a lot of uh, phantom notifications and things like that. Uh, so I talked about that, but one cool thing about this device is it actually exposes the alarm to HomeKit. So not a lot of people know that. And actually uh, it's the only HomeKit alarm that I've seen that actually exposes the alarm to HomeKit, meaning you can actually call on that alarm to sound and you can change the tone duration and things like that. And it's not super obvious, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in case you want to, because this is something that's been asked a lot as well. So in addition to the alarm, we're also going to turn on our outside lights. You can call somebody so you can have this set to automatically call somebody. It's also gonna lock all the doors. Uh, you can also have it start recording video, you know, if you want to you know, record video footage for whatever reason. Uh, so those are some things you can kind of get creative and do whatever you want with this. All right, so for our panic scene, we're gonna use the Eve app, okay? Cause this is gonna give us some options that we can't do otherwise. So we're gonna go over here into automation, uh, go into your scenes, tap edit. And we're gonna tap new scene, all right? And we're gonna add actions. First thing I'm gonna do is sound this alarm. Okay, this is the Onvis um, security system. So I'm looking for security system alarm switch. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that on. And it took me some kind of trial and error, some playing around to figure this out. But uh, 251, actually, that's where I want it. So I've done this before. So it automatically defaults to there. So uh, I'm gonna choose add. I'm gonna add another action and now I'm looking for uh, security system alarm switch ringtone right here. I'm gonna turn that on and this, I'm gonna move this to one. So it's kind of hard to get it right there, but I want this at one. And again, I did some trial and error to figure out what all this did. This is where I want it. This is gonna give me that alarm sound. Uh, and it's gonna play for a while. Choose add. Okay, so there we go. So now our alarm is gonna sound when we initiate this scene. Okay, so now we can do other things as well. Lock all of our doors. So we'll go outside, we'll, our garage door, we'll make sure that's closed. Add that. Front porch light, we'll make sure that's on. We'll go to our back door light, we'll turn that on. Let's see deck lights we could turn those on we can turn on our driveway light um might as well turn our deck lights on too we've got our security system good back door we're going to make sure that's locked front door make sure that's locked okay add all right so there we go so this scene is going to sound that alarm on the system and it's going to lock our doors, turn on all the outside lights. Okay, choose next. We're gonna call, call this panic button. And let's see, there it is right there. So I'm gonna be really careful not to set it off right now. Um, now, we can create a shortcut if we wanted to and you can actually you know, tie this to other things, but we can create a shortcut that sets that scene. Control Watley Home. 
and look for our new panic button right there. So this is gonna run that. And then we can say, you know, we can call somebody. So, you know, you can call your dad or whoever you wanna call. You could probably put like 911 as a contact in your phone and have it call 911. Also, I haven't tried that, but I think that would work. I know you can call any contact, so you might just have to save 911 as a contact, but that's probably something that you could do automatically also. All right, and, and really that's it. Let's just call it panic shortcut. Done. If I tap that, it's gonna sound our alarm, turn on all our outside lights, lock the doors, shut the garage, and it's gonna call a contact. So that's how we set up our panic button. Now this Onvis alarm is only like $30, $40 or something like that. It's not a whole lot. Again, it, it does have some issues, so I don't know if I'd recommend it if you want it for that, but if you do want uh, an alarm that is exposed to home kit, you can use it and just use this alarm feature like we've done here. Now, if you don't want to use this Onvis alarm and you want to just use a HomePod or AirPlay 2 speaker, you can just set the HomePod to play an alarm sound. All right, that's it there. Now let's move on to dummy switches. Dummy switches are really cool. I actually started using these a while ago. The, my use case was I wanted my garage door to open automatically when I got home every day. The problem was uh, when you set this up through HomeKit, you get that little notification that pops up and says, do you want to run this? Well, you cannot use automatic triggers such as time of day or when I arrive home, things like that to open up those um, accessories. Now you can use other devices to trigger those accessories and that's where the dummy switch comes in. Basically all we do is set an automation when we arrive home to turn on the dummy switch. Okay. Second automation says when the dummy switch turns on open the garage door or unlock the front door and it's really that simple. That's all we have to do. Now before I had Homebridge, I actually just used a, a regular smart outlet. I hit it somewhere, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and set up these automations that when I got home, turn on that smart outlet, and then when that smart outlet turns on, shut the garage door, and it works fine. Now I have Homebridge, and I'm using Hooves, which is awesome. I did a whole video on Hooves that makes Homebridge super easy, uh, especially for dummies like me. So uh, check out that video if you're interested in running Homebridge, but you know, you're a little intimidated by uh, some of the programming and all that kind of stuff. It makes it really easy. So one of the first Homebridge plugins that I used was a plugin called Dummy Switch. And this is actually a Hoob certified plugin now. So you can create as many virtual switches as you want that will show up in your, uh, in your home app as any switch. And you can also do timers, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. But let's go ahead and set up this dummy switch first to trigger my uh, garage door. All right, so I'm on my Hoobs dashboard just by going to hoobs.local. And again, if you wanna find more information on this, check out that uh, Hoobs video. I'm not gonna go into detail here, but I already have the dummy switch plugin installed. So I'm gonna click the gear icon. And over here, you can see dummy switch. I'm gonna add an accessory. We're gonna call this garage door trigger. It's gonna be the name of this switch. I'm gonna leave that at no, reverse no, time is good. Uh, and just click save changes, okay? And now if we uh, go into our accessories, we should see unassigned, and now we have that new garage door trigger. Now let's open up HomeKit. I'll show you what it looks like in HomeKit, and we'll set up that automation to automatically open our garage door. All right, so let's open up the home app. If we go to our rooms, in my default room, that's where these are gonna pop up. You can see my garage door trigger is right here. If I turn this on, it automatically turns off. So it is just a virtual switch. Uh, right now it doesn't do anything, but uh, we can now use this to create that automation. So let's do a new automation. Uh, we're gonna say when people arrive home, uh, I want to use just me. We're gonna do just me. Uh, next, and we're going to find that switch. Let's see, where are you? Default room, garage door trigger. Next, when this turns on, okay, and you can turn off here if you want, but we don't need to because it's gonna turn off automatically. So if you're using an actual plug, I would recommend turn this off after one or two minutes. Uh, that way it'll reset, okay? Because this is our virtual switch from Homebridge, we don't need to do that, it's gonna do it automatically choose done okay so now when I arrive home it's gonna turn that switch on of course it'll turn back off in a minute but that is going to trigger our new automation that when an accessory is controlled we're gonna choose that same switch where are you 
default room, garage door trigger. Next, when that turns on, next, we're going to find my garage door. Choose next and we're going to open the garage door. And you can see we don't have any issues there. It's gonna do this automatically and I won't have to tap anything. Choose done. And there you go, it's that simple. That works like a charm. As you can see, these dummy switches are really awesome, especially if you're running Homebridge, you can use as many or as little of these as you want. Let me show you real quick how you can set up a timer. This is something that somebody asked me. So in HomeKit, you do have the ability with a lot of accessories to turn off after a certain number of time, but sometimes that's not enough. You know, you wanna build these advanced automations. You need a timer to do some more things or whatever, get creative with it. We're gonna go back over to our dummy switches here and uh, we're gonna choose add accessory. Let's, let's name this five second timer. So it's basically just gonna be a switch and it will turn off after five seconds, okay? So this here will be, now this is in milliseconds, so uh, 5,000 will be just five seconds. Now you can do the math and you can make this as long as you want. I've tried this out, I've done a few minutes and everything and it does work, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're just gonna do five seconds to show you how it works. And we'll choose save. Now, if we go into our accessories, unassigned, we'll see that five second timer right there. Okay, now let's jump back into the home app and in our default room, you can see we now have that five second timer. So just to show you real quick, if I tap it, you're gonna see that's gonna stay on for five seconds and then it's gonna go off just like that. Again, for demonstration purposes, but you can set these up to last as long as you want and create automations around this. All right, that is it. We got through a lot today. We talked about Homebridge, CarPlay, a lot of things in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and got something out of it. All right, now in the beginning of this video, I mentioned how you could win one of these wallets here uh, made by Exter. I've got an extra one that I'm going to send to one person along with the tracker card that you can use with Siri shortcuts and automations and car play like we did all kinds of cool stuff there to win this just do three things make sure you're subscribed to my channel follow me on Instagram and leave a comment under the picture with this wallet so um, I just posted an image on my Instagram profile with this wallet go in there leave a comment tell me what your favorite automation is whatever it doesn't matter a winner will be announced on my instagram page in one week if you made it this far in the video thanks for sticking with me we covered a lot again be sure to check back next week we're going to take it a step further we're going to build that really cool morning shortcut that's going to have siri read us our day and tell us all kind of stuff including the weather our calendar events and it's all going to happen automatically when we stop our alarm we're also going to discuss running that automation server so that we can have full access to all of the shortcut actions with all of our automations and run automatic time-based automations so it's going to be a good one if you enjoyed this and home kit and this kind of stuff be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because we're dropping new home kit videos every Sunday right here. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next week, we'll see y'all later.